Welcome back to Gothic Homemaking. There is no more universal symbol of Halloween than the jack-o'-lantern. So of course, this being Mayumi's first Halloween in the US, yes. I want to make sure she sees quite a lot of them. Imagine my glee when I found out that we could go to New York's Hudson Valley to a place called the Great Jack-o'-lantern Blaze and see 7,000 of them on display if we had tickets. No. <laughs> <laughs> As it happens, I looked on October 1st and they were sold out all of the way into mid-November. But luckily for me, I've got friends in low places. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> not you dummy. I went to StubHub. I'm not going to tell you what I paid for those tickets because this show is PG-13 at best and what I paid was obscene. But suffice to say, we were going. Yeah. <laughs> now, looking for a hotel in the area, I stumbled upon a castle that had been transformed into a hotel, and I thought, what a perfect Halloween romantic getaway, right? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be romantic. <laughs> what do you think? Should we bring Orville? No, my love. <laughs> I don't think so either. Well, in any case, it was set. We were going to go stay in a castle and look at jack-o'-lanterns. But then I found out that there's another blaze in Long Island, New York, and I thought, we should go to that one too. <laughs> a bit more research, and I turned out that there's a castle near there as well in Cold Spring Harbor, New York, called the Ohika Castle. So what ended up happening is we had two weekends in a row where we stayed at castles and looked at jack-o'-lanterns. Take a look. The drive up to Ohika Castle really feels like you're driving along the European countryside with its immaculate gardens and its old world charm. The Ohika Castle really seems like a piece of Europe right here in America. It was built in 1919 by financier Otto Kahn, and it is said that he threw roaring parties here throughout the 20s that were attended by royalty and Hollywood stars. Some say it inspired the Great Gatsby. Opening the front door, you can see this majestic stairway is decorated for a wedding, and we definitely got the impression a lot of weddings take place here. The castle, which lay derelict for decades, was purchased in the 80s and is being restored to its former glory. It boasts several ballrooms, including this one in which I couldn't stop singing. Who knew we had 8,000 salad plates? And speaking of salad plates, Mayumi and I made our way to the restaurant and we ordered food and drinks, which I must say were really quite good. We had to get our strength up as we had a long night ahead of us of hunting for jack-o'-lanterns at the Long Island Blaze. Well, night fell and our carriage came to pick us up. It dropped us off at Old Bethpage Restoration Village where we were welcomed in many languages. We entered the big archway into an eerily lit forest with a path illuminated by jack-o'-lanterns. Now, this is the Long Island Blaze, and this year, I guess their theme was things involving Long Island. Like, for instance, a shark attack that inspired the movie Jaws. And Long Island's involvement in video gaming. To be honest with you, though, I really prefer traditional Halloween themes, like this spooky red-lit forest, and these wonderful skeletal pumpkin people, I really lost my head for these guys. Now, if you're an arachnophobe, you're probably not gonna appreciate the giant spider web and the little creepy crawly pumpkins. Gentle folk like yourself might instead prefer the calming movements of the windmill. I found this haunted farm really quite distressing, but not as wonderfully distressing as what was happening in this barn. It seems like some kind of paranormal invasion of some sort. Just down the way, there were a trio of witches that were really beautifully sculpted, and they looked really fantastic against the backdrop of the old Bethpage Restoration Village. Speaking of which, one of the houses was dressed up to look haunted and had lots of mewling cat pumpkins on the ground. But not all of the jack-o'-lanterns were on the ground. Some of them were in the trees above us, and some were even carved to look like bats. Just down the way, there was a recreation of the legend of Sleepy Hollow, complete with galloping hooves and horse neighing and maniacal laughter. In a nod to more local horror, the Amityville Horror House was recreated here, including Jody the Possessed Pig down there at the bottom left. 
but my favorite part of the entire blaze was in front of the house. I absolutely loved this cemetery. And let me tell you that the one thing the pandemic hasn't ruined this year was evident right here at the blaze. Listen to the original audio of the event. Take your time, take your pictures, but please keep giving those in front of you a full 10 feet of space. Let the armed social distance markers be your guide. Enjoy the extra elbow room and have a great blaze. I've heard that in the past this event has been so crowded they needed a fire marshal. So having all of that space to move around and the liberty to really be able to see all of the exhibits without being crowded by other people was nothing short of magical. There was also a pumpkin art section immortalizing famous paintings and painters with the headless horseman cleverly hidden in these carvings. And in this barn there was a reference to Long Island's involvement in the lunar landings. And that was brought to life by creating pumpkin astronauts who let us know that it was just one small step for pumpkin kind. There's also an astrology section great for photo opportunities, a haunted carousel, a giant sea serpent, a lighthouse, and some giant dinosaurs. But as we followed the path of jack-o'-lanterns to the exit, what I really enjoyed most about the event was just walking around at night in this eerily lit forest, as well as the terrifying simplicity of the Halloween jack-o'-lantern. The next day we awoke in Ohika Castle and we found our way to one of the ballrooms where they serve up a fantastic breakfast. And if you're late like we are, you may get the whole place to yourself. After breakfast, we finally made it outside to see the gardens. Sadly, it was very windy and really rainy. But within moments, Mayumi spotted a crane and decided they needed to be friends. So we ended up spending the rest of our time quietly skulking around trying to get a better look at it. But like the good weather, it ultimately escaped us. But as always, we made the best of things. And there you have it. That was our Blaze experience. What'd you think of the blaze? It was so beautiful. And staying at the Ohika Castle, that was a dream. That was interesting. <laughs> it was a nightmare. <laughs> it was a nightmare. You don't see it in the video, but unfortunately when we went there, there was a wedding going on and we were told we couldn't go out to the grounds. So we were restricted to our room and the restaurant. And then the reception happened. And it was like a Long Island wedding. Bada bing, bada boom, forget about it. Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> that went on forever. And then they had the after party in a suite. Next to our room. Directly next to our room. Wow. And they were scream singing Sweet Caroline till five in the morning. Yeah. The management was very nice. They ultimately did move us and they upgraded us to a suite. So that was very, very kind <laughs> of them. My advice to you would be have your wedding there or stay there on a weekday. But don't stay there on a weekend when someone else is getting married. Because no. it was it was crazy. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful place though. Yes. Really gorgeous. Yeah. We had better luck though the following week in Hudson Valley, didn't we? Absolutely. Take a look. Our trip began at Grand Central Station in New York City, where I took a moment to show Mayumi our beautiful station and its gorgeous ceiling. Then it was onto a Metro North train to Terrytown, New York, which takes about an hour to get to from the city. Ten minutes from the station, we arrived at a castle that sits on one of the highest spots in Westchester. This castle was built in 1897 by General Howard Carroll as a residence for his family. Of course, these days it's open to the public and it's more commonly known as the Castle Hotel and Spa. Of course, I still think it's the perfect place for a dashing knight to save his damsel in distress. Mayumi, Mayumi, let down your hair. I'm over here, silly. Presuming, of course, she hasn't already saved herself. The castle has an incredible dining room that's hosted everyone from J.P. Morgan to the Rockefellers to the Carnegies. And in that room, there's a balcony from which they can announce special guests. And out back, there is a lawn with views of the Hudson that has seen many a wedding. And I know, because I officiated one of them. But why did I choose the castle? Well, because it's so well guarded. Woo! 
Night fell, and as we were already done storming the castle, it was time to go to the Hudson Valley Blaze, which takes place at the Van Cortlandt Manor. Now, it's run by the same people, so I was kind of concerned that this might be the same exact exhibit. We walked under the arch, and once again, we were greeted by a trail of jack-o'-lanterns. And some familiar faces. But right away, there was a new exhibit in this pumpkin bridge, which was really quite lovely. They also had a version of a sea serpent, and this star bridge, which I hadn't managed to get a shot of in Long Island. They also had the morbid carousel, though I thought it was vastly better presented here. And there were other surprises. They also had their version of the Sleepy Hollow Trail, again with galloping and neighing and lighting effects. And a really gorgeous sculpture. And the unicorn as well made an appearance, though I never did find out who these three fellows were. But I did recognize Hansel and Gretel and this little witch's house. There was the astrology section, and also the arachnid section, though their arachnid section was vastly more terrifying with these giant creepy spider skeleton people. The Statue of Liberty was of course far less terrifying, and the dinosaur section once again I felt was better presented. These sunflowers were a big favorite of Mayumi's, but the real showstopper was this house. It had an animated light show, and it was synchronized with lights inside the house and music to create a really spectacular effect. Me encanta esta casa. Yeah, it's really amazing. Directly across the house was the cemetery, and you know that was my favorite once again. I really love all of these tombstones and skeletons and ghouls, but the cemetery wasn't a dead end. It led to the Headless Horseman Bridge. Enter if you dare, and you will find a ceiling full of bats, sculptures of the horseman himself, and lights and sounds synchronized to make you feel like he is galloping through the bridge while you're in there. It's really a lot of fun inside. We did manage to escape with our lives and found our way to this peaceful windmill, which so kindly pointed us towards the exit. As we exited the blaze through a path of jack-o'-lanterns, I want to believe the skeletons were waving goodbye to us, telling us, See you again next year. And there you have it, those are the blazes. What did you think? Do you think it was necessary to go to both of them? Yeah. Really? Yes, <laughs> they both are beautiful and I love them. Yeah, there's a lot of overlap. I definitely felt though that the Hudson Valley Blaze was better. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for tagging along with us on our tour of castles and blazes. We hope you have a very happy and healthy Halloween. Happy Halloween.